Hi, I'm Jennifer Zong, and I'm the 2023 DNA Day Essay Contest winner. Hi, I'm Maria Zeitlin, and I'm Jennifer's teacher at Smithtown High School East. Um, I interpreted one humanity many genomes to mean that although humans are very genetically similar on the DNA level, the small differences in our genome allow us to be phenotypically different, which means that we are physically different from one another on the outside, but we also have different predestinations to disease. So I wrote about single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are changes in the DNA level for one single nucleotide, and also copy number variants, which is when a greater region of DNA is changed. I also wrote about epigenetic changes to chromatin structure, which is when certain factors in the environment can have an effect on whether certain genes are expressed. So the DNA Day Essay Contest is something that our science research program at my school does every year. So my teacher, Ms. Silen, is who introduced me to it, and I've been participating in it for three years now, I think. It definitely feels like all my hard work after all these years has paid off. It means a lot to me. It feels like, again, like all my hard work has paid off after all these years. I feel like I've learned a lot from the overall experience. I really enjoyed writing the essay and learning a lot more about genetics through the whole process. Yeah, I plan on majoring in biomedical engineering next year in college. So I'm excited because that gives me the opportunity to pursue science, which is something that I genuinely love. And I also want to pursue a higher education and pursue science as a career path. The experience for me as a teacher is amazing. I absolutely love the DNA essay. It's something that I look forward to every single year, uh, mostly because it makes my students have to kind of dig deeper, way beyond any curriculum they've received from, say, AP Bio. And I, I really believe the heart of biology is molecular genetics. Like that's that's where it's at for me. And uh, a little bit a little bit of background when I did my graduate work, and I had this exposure that I'm just really happy to pass on to my students. So we start the, the process probably six weeks out from the deadline. And I have my students, the first thing they have to do is look at the prompt and then send me what's their gut response to it. And then I have them go and look into the primary literature and they have to read and read and read. And then they write their first draft and it gets shredded and it gets sent back to them because I checked the, the science and then they have to write a second draft, and then they have to write a third draft, and then they have to write a fourth draft. So it's, an, it's a really great way to make them dive into genetics and really learn it. And I love that every year the prompt is different. And so if you have the same students entering year after year, they're learning more each year, and that's really cool. Uh, the students go right in through Google, but uh, they have sort of the directive that it needs to be journals. It needs to be primary literature. Uh, they can also use sources such as uh, NIH for some of the government databases for uh, certain diseases, for example. They can go into those. But, you know, it, it can't be a Google search in the ordinary sense. Uh, the uh, the sources that they use are very closely scrutinized, and I, I think I've taught them well enough by the time spring comes, when this essay contest is, is out there for them, how to, how to use a good source. And so that's really another example of how important it is for them to be sort of judicious with, you know, where are you getting your information from? So I, I just believe that scientific writing is science. That's what it is. And so I coordinate a research program where students can, you know, uh, conduct research 
And so the very, very first thing they have to learn after uh, learning how to read primary literature is how to write. And so this is absolutely part of my curriculum for the spring. As soon as that essay prompt comes out, we are starting. And uh, there's, there's no extra credit in, in my class for anything. Uh, everything is for a purpose. And there's nothing more important than being a scientifically literate student. The first thing that comes to mind is really get to know the science behind the prompt. Is there's nothing worse than trying to answer a question without being fully informed. And sometimes just reading superficially is not enough. The genetics prompts are very intricate. They're very involved. And perhaps on the surface level, you might think this is a really easy uh, question to answer, but it's not. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that I try to teach my students is, you know, drink deeply of the Perian spring of knowledge. Don't just take a surface because there are semesters at college on genetics, semesters. So if you think you went on to a Google site and in five minutes you can answer the question, you haven't thought about it enough. So rule number one, learn the science and then you write. So it takes weeks of just reading before they even begin to write something. You know, I'll, I'll give one more piece of advice for, for educators. Don't be afraid of the topic. There are many teachers out there that are afraid to assign an essay contest like this because they don't know themselves the topic of genetics. And the first thing I do is I do a deep dive. So I use it as a way for myself to learn the science. So don't be afraid of it if you don't know it. You can build the parachute on the way down. Yeah, I would say overall it was a really good experience. It's definitely a lot of hard work and you have to like learn a lot to be able to write an essay. But I would say if you want to do it, you should go for it because again, you get to learn a lot through the process and you might be studying something that you're really interested in but you didn't know you were before that.